Hello, my name is Ed Woods with IBM Corporation. Thank you for taking the time to take a look at this video. What we're talking about today is building effective dashboard views using a Mega Monitively Enterprise Portal. In this example, which will be just a brief example, we'll look at how you can use a Megamon and its portal capabilities to build a customized view of your monitoring environment. I want to mention as well my Tivoli with a Z blog, which looks at uh, Tivoli monitoring and management solutions on the Z platform. I also want to add this disclaimer, the typical kind of disclaimer you would expect. This is, this, this is for informational purposes. I'm not making any warranties. Now, why monitoring and management dashboards? Are you getting the most from your monitoring and management technology? Are you able to see things from an end-to-end -end perspective? Can you resolve issues effectively? This boils down to managing technology versus managing business systems. You have the ability to do either of these using the Tivoli portal. Now, in terms of alternatives to, to create this, we can use the Tivoli Enterprise portal to establish the premise of a management dashboard view. The tap gives you some powerful and flexible graphic and integration capabilities. At some point, though, you will probably want to grow this beyond the, uh, the capabilities of the TAP and look at such technologies, the Tivoli Business Systems Management, or TBSM, to expand this concept even further. Now, using the TAP to create an effective dashboard, you have the capability built within the Omegamon and the Tivoli tool set. It's quite powerful, quite easy to do, and what you need is the portal, your monitoring agents, and you need to have what's called the Dashboard Edition Enablement depending upon what you have in terms of licensing, to be able to go then and customize and craft these views. Now, in terms of um, the various management uh, tools that plug in the Tivoli Enterprise Portal, you have quite a few. Here's the list right here. ZOS monitoring, automation, distributed monitoring, storage tools, health checkers, Unix system services monitoring, you name it. Here's an example of a, of a typical dashboard type of a view you can create. It pulls in graphics, detail, browser interface, command capabilities, situation alert capabilities. All of this ties into this integrated view. Now let's take a look at a typical scenario such as what we're talking about here. So let's go in and let's start customizing our environment. The first thing we want to do is we want to create a new navigation item here. I like to create a new navigation item as a starting point because this is going to be a customized view specific to a audience or a set of audiences. So we'll give it a name and we'll give this, I'll get very creative with the name, we'll call it Dashboard View. And we'll say OK. And then what we'll need to do next is we're going to want to add some additional detail to this. So what we'll do then is we'll click on Dashboard View and then we'll select some child items to add to this. And with each of these child items, this is going to be some additional detail, if you think of it, that we're going to add to the view. So we'll pull in such information as our ZOS status, and we'll just continue to click and add additional information from here as we go. Here's our CICS status. We'll say OK again, and just keep on going down the line. The idea of this, basically how I like to, uh, to build these, is to start with my initial view, and then build out the navigation tree and add additional items as I need. So whether that's additional ZOS items, distributed items, whatever it is, this is kind of like the, um, the, the frame, if you will, that I, I will like to build my navigation tree on and then attach all my other monitoring information to it. So we're going to continue to build out and add our additional navigation tree items. There, there's MQ. And so now I think we've got a pretty good look at what we're going to be working with here. So now the next step then is then is what can we add to this over and above what we have already. So we, what we want to do is we want to add some additional detail underneath the basic status items we've added in the status and the navigation tree, I should say. So what we'll do is we'll click on the uh, right side here and we'll select some items and what we can do is we can click and drag over the things that we want to add to whatever is the most appropriate point on the navigation tree. So we'll add underneath uh, DB2 status, we'll add uh, thread activity. And then we'll add some additional information as well. So we'll explode up the navigation tree again on the right. And then we'll pick some additional things. Like here, I'm going to look for some stuff to add from a CICS perspective and add that to the navigation tree view as well under CICS. And so we'll repeat the process as well for some of the other monitoring agents. We'll do the same thing here. We'll add some information for ZOS. So it's like, what do you want to look at for ZOS? Typically, you want to look at such things as address spaces. So we'll go ahead and we'll add address spaces at this point. Once we have 
build out our navigation tree, we can go ahead and we can close this tree editor pop-up. We'll close it out. We'll click on the button that will then in turn refresh the navigation tree. And then if we look in the upper left corner, we now have the nav tree build out and has the additional subordinate items and everything there for our dashboard view. So now what we want, what we want to do next is we want to add a graphic view to this picture here. So click on the icon on the top and we'll drag it down and drop it. And what that will let us do then is that will then in turn let us put some type of a graphic view. And you see it gives us a default graphic view of the world type of thing. But we'll typically change that. So we'll go into properties and we'll click in the background. And what I'll typically start with is this, since this is a simple example, what we'll do is we'll add, we'll just use the uh, a blank background. Then we'll set the properties for this view, give it a name, etc set the style sheets, uh, set the type of icons and how it looks so that we then control how it will appear. So this will basically be a blank background using shapes and then the icons will indicate if there's an alert. I like this type of a technique because then it's very easy to see, it's very visible. If there's an issue, the situation will fire and we'll see a change of shape and color. Now let's add some detail to the mix here. What we're going to do is we're going to put some tabular data in the bottom portion of the screen. So to add the tabular data, I click the uh, table icon, drag it down, and now what we're doing is we're looking for a query. And so the query is going to be the data that we're going to put into this particular piece of the workspace. So we're going to scroll around and we're going to pick a particular uh, query. In this case, we're going to look for something relative to address space. One of the typical things people like to look at is address space CPU. So let's go ahead and put one of those queries into this particular portion of the workspace. So we will select it, click on it, say OK. And then what we'll get then is this view here, which will then in turn, you'll see here we have um, the data appearing in the uh, in the properties view. And then we'll, if we click on the uh, style tab, that will let us actually then go ahead and change the header in terms of what will appear on this portion of the uh, workspace. Give it something a more meaningful name than just table or table one or table two. So we'll say ZOS address space CPU. Now we'll say OK. So, so far so good. We've added a graphic view. We have tabular data, but let's keep going. Let's add information from, from additional agents to this mix. Notice how I can slide over the scroll bar. I can split the bottom portion. Now let's go into properties again. And let's do the same process, but only now we're going to do it for a different query. So let's scroll down. Now let's get some DB2 data. So let's get some typical kind of DB2 info. What's one of the first things you want to see? Of course, threads. So let's pull our thread information in. And similar process to what we looked at before. So what we'll do is we'll uh, click on the Style tab. We'll change the uh, header for this portion of the workspace to something that's uh, relevant that says DP2 threads. So now we know we're looking at threads here. And we'll go ahead and we'll do the process once again. Split it off one more time. And we'll go ahead then and we'll add some additional information. Go into prop back into properties. And then we'll say, okay, let's select another query. So again, this is all driven by this mechanism called queries. Understanding the nature of queries and how you can use these to put data into the workspaces is very integral to the whole process. So we'll scroll down now and we will uh, select the uh, query that we want to add. In this case we're going to select a, res a uh, response time analysis from Omegamon CICS. We'll say OK. Style tab, same as before. Now we'll put some indication as to what the data is that we're looking at here. Put in the name for this portion of the workspace. Click OK. And now there we go. So now what have we done? Now we have our workspace with information from three different agents, ZOS, DB2, CICS. We have alert status items coming from several sources. And oh, by the way, what I just did there was I went and saved this workspace so I can go back and recall this. So notice how we can explode up this thing by on the navigation tree by clicking on the plus sign that expands out the navigation tree. You can expand and contract the navigation tree. You can maximize and minimize the graphic views. If there is an alert on an icon in question, you would see that icon change uh, shape and color. And then we can also click on the navigation tree to navigate to other portions of the, uh, of the portal. 
and then in turn if we want to go back from where we started we just click back on the dashboard view and that will take us back to where we began the whole process and so now here we go back to our original workspace the one we just created that's our dashboard view which we created and then saved in the portal they're available to use and so that's the process and I just want to say thank you very much I will continue to do more of these thank you and have a wonderful day goodbye